This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz, continuing the series on Falling in Love with the Bridegroom. Before I get started, if you would like to get my complete Falling in Love with the Bridegroom devotional, for free, check the link in the description below. This devotional will teach you how to have quiet times and give you ample scriptures to spend in your devoted study of our Lord. Now let's get to today's devotional. Dear Lord, I praise you that you knew when you were on earth where you were going and you knew where you came from and that you showed the disciples a different way of being from the world and that was a position of servant leadership. Help us to learn from the story today and to grow in you. In your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to be reading from John 13. You may have guessed that, English Standard Version. And I would suggest reading the whole chapter, but I'm going to read John 13, 1 through 20, and I'm going to take a sip of water because it's a long passage and my throat is dry due to allergies. Oh, joy. March is upon us. All right, so, friends, this is the word of the Lord. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered, Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had, fin when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you who, if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. All right, so what can we glean that the bridegroom is like? I'm going to take another sip of water. My bridegroom, your bridegroom, does everything opposite of the world. He knows he's in charge. He has complete confidence in God. He knows where he came from and where he's going. Knowing all this, he takes on a menial chore for his disciples because he loves them and will love them to the end, even the one who betrays him. So what is my response? Love others the way Jesus loves me. He observed their needs. The first one I need to observe and take care of needs is my husband, who has been suffering, oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I was suffering one from one ailment after another. Dude, I don't even remember that. But yes, it is good to serve your family members. You know, I think that I mentioned the other day that, you know, I, we try to serve each other, like Travis will empty the trash 
or unload the dishwasher. The other day I woke up and discovered that the microwave was clean. And so, you know, it just keeps going back and forth like that. Or I'll cook him boiled eggs. I'll put an extra piece of bacon on for him or something like that. You know, you get the picture. So it's all about having that other-centered focus on serving others. So how can I apply this to my life practically? Well, again, you know, one of the things that I try to do, and I'm not always very successful at it, because sometimes, quite frankly, I'm lazy, is, you know, wash the dish that I used and put it near the dishwasher so he can load it. That That's just one of his jobs. It's the way we divvied up the chores. Everybody's different, but that's what we decided to do. So to really be courteous to him is good if both he and my son wash our dishes that we used so it doesn't burden one person. So just a little example. You can come up with your own. All right. Now, to conclude... And I'm reading through my journal, and I'm not seeing the certain. Yeah, so the question is, what is God saying to you through this passage? And, you know, who, maybe there's a person you need to support. I wrote down a person here. I'm not sure who it was. I'm not thinking about who it was. Okay. But anyway, there might be a person that you need to support. And that you can show love to them through some kind of service. So think about that. All right. So that's all about that passage. It's a very great passage, especially as Easter approaches in a few weeks. All right. So I'm going to end in prayer. Dear Lord, again, I thank you that you know, you knew who, where you were going, where you came from. And you had confidence, and you you gave it all, and you did something so surprising to the disciples. And thank you for John, who wrote this all down. And we can understand now that at the time, the disciples didn't understand what was going on. We just thank you that you have washed us clean. You are our everything. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, so that's all for today's devotional. Tomorrow I'll continue my series on falling in love with the bridegroom. Again, if you want the free devotional, check the link below. Would you like to go deeper into the scriptures? Find out more about my Becoming God's Bride Bible study. Check that out also in the description box below. So with that, I'm going to leave you with my favorite blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelArts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond.